Hello, everyone. I'm Susan Nash, AEPG. I'm delighted to be able to invite you and, and welcome you to AAPG Academy. Today, we have a wonderful, wonderful presentation by Victor Ramirez, and it is called Play Concepts Applied to Columbia Caribbean Basin. And I would just like to take a moment to ask everyone to mute. If you've not muted, um, um, we will have to remove you. So this is just a fair warning. <laughs> and so anyway, so thank you very much. And I'd like to in introduce Victor. Victor is a geologist from the National University of Columbia with more than 29 years of experience. He's a specialist in economic geology from the Netherlands and a master's in geoscience from the University of Alabama and a diploma, diploma in renewable energies from the Julio Garavito in Engineering School. So he's currently an independent consultant in hydrocarbon and energy. He has many years of experience um, with various companies and thrilled to have you. Welcome. Okay. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, APG. Thank you, all the attendants today. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's an honor for me to be here sharing these uh, exciting projects from the last two years. I uh, have been working intensively in, in the Caribbean Basin. I will switch off my camera because I, I don't see a portable because I'm looking to the, in, the, in the different way to the of the camera. Um, this uh, this summary uh, this presentation is a summary of a couple of projects we have been developing from the last two years for the National Hydrocarbon Agency. Nowadays, after living a Copetron for uh, after more than twenty two years, I'm working as a consultant. And I had the chance to make part of the great team of professionals uh, with Colombian Geological Survey, Servicio Geológico Colombiano, performing projects for the ANH. This is a team that uh, with a, a group of very expert, expert colleagues, very professional colleagues. And uh, I, what, what I will be sharing are some ideas that we put together to make some uh, orderly and systematic approach to our Caribbean Basin. Uh, in the past, many companies have been, ha, have been working in the Caribbean. Uh, uh, of course, Ecopetrol, Petrobras, Shell, Anadarko, ONGC, uh, Estatol at the time, BHP, BP, uh, Exxon, Repsol. And all of these companies have a good idea of the Caribbean, internal ideas of the Caribbean, partial, locally, geographically uh, uh, focused ideas. And at this time, we, with the geological survey and ANH, we put together all the information to have a systematic approach. This is a, a summary of regional features uh, as are reflected in bathymetry in the Caribbean. This is a basin uh, for, of more than uh, 300,000 square kilometers in area. Uh, we are, uh, we focus our interpretation in this area, uh, Close, close here by this yellow outline. We have here very striking features as are reflected in bathymetry, the South Caribbean default belt, the Caribbean fan, the Hess escarpment, Beata Ridge, and Vera Ridge. And these features are associated, are, are related, are the product or the interaction of the Caribbean plate located here and the South American plate for their uh, south. Uh, we have access to extend to an extensive database and we managed to put together in a single project all this information, more than 100,000 kilometers of 2D seismic. Uh, we have had the chance to evaluate in the level of 20,000 kilometers of 3D seismic, but uh, the coverage of 3D seismic is really, really extensive, more than 70,000 square kilometers. And we had access to information of 66 wells. For the, for the value of the project, this is very interesting information. However, 66 wells, in a basin this extensive uh, can reflect the level of, of coverage we might have and the character of the frontier area we are identifying for the area. And in the last stage of the project, we integrated the information of uh, almost 1,300 uh, piston core locations, which provide information of the petroleum systems, of the fluid, uh, hydrocarbon fluids activity in the subsurface. And this is a, a, an addition, a very important addition because for the first time, we, we put together piston core campaigns from different companies, different laboratories, different approaches 
And we now have an overview that is again, and I will be using this word during the presentation, a systematic approach. These are so, a summary of some of the uh, regional observations we have achieved in this, in this project. This is a basement depth map uh, in, the, in the basin. North of this, uh, in, in the north or west part, we are in the already in the in the province of the Caribbean basin, Caribbean and the Caribbean coast, with very striking features east west as a structural trend. This is the deeper portion of the of the area, and very interestingly, in a in a work uh, published recently by Robert et al, they identified in the central area and a, a, a zone where the where the cross is thinner. And I see this striking correlation. We still need to interpret, to make an interpretation uh, out of these observations that where we have the deepest portion of the, of the basin or the, the, the deepest uh, expression of the basement, we have the expression of thinner cross according to this interpretation. Maybe there, is a, there should be one on one relationship. And also uh, we have to, to imagine what will be the implications for the uh, thermal regime in the area and the petroleum systems? This is uh, this this is well, this west is features are also reflected along the 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 long the, through the Miocene sequence up to the late Miocene. Uh, we have this control, and again the deeper portion of the basin is in this central part indicated here with the bluish colors. South and to the south. Uh, uh, in the upper portion of the, uh, in the southern portion of the South Caribbean default belt, we have the interpretation in the in the Caribbean, in the uh, sorry, in the Guajira area, and then the Suno full belt, where we have the, the uh, located some sub basins, piggyback basins, or basins associated to the uh, to the convergence between the South American plate and the Caribbean plate. The discussion if we have here subduction or not is still ongoing. We don't see the typical classical subduction. So no uh, authors claim that this, uh, this, in, this is a non-typical subduction, uh, but is no as strikingly uh, evident as we see, for instance, in the Pacific uh, area of Colombia. We have put together the constatographic information Using the, the data from the wells in the near uh, in the near coast area, near coastal area, out of these 66 wells I just mentioned, and in the uh, northern and westernmost part of the basin, we have ODPs and DSDP wells that uh, recorded information down to the Cretaceous, uh, uh, which indicates the presence of uh, or relics or, or rem remnant, remnants of sedimentary sequence from the Cretaceous, which might have implications for uh, the petroleum systems. We have the, uh, uh, the interpretation of the continuous deposition, very low uh, uh, um, gaps in the, in the record, with it, but in, it's indicated, but it's, uh, all this is associated mainly in the Cretaceous to uh, um, condensed sequences. The sequence of the Cretaceous is very thin, and in the tertiary, you have a, a strong or very thick coverage with local development of uh, possible reservoir units. From the structural point of view in this project, we managed to identify the influence of the modiapirism. Uh, Here you see the structural style uh, from, the, the, from the, the middle part uh, in the line, we see the, the South Caribbean default belt. We say it's a fall bell uh, feature. We don't. We see. We identify is mainly convergence between the Caribbean plate and South American plate. We don't know necessarily need to call this subduction, but of course we see this convergence between the two between the two provinces. Here, very interestingly, we see location of the Gorgon discovery, which I mention. I will mention in a min, in, uh, in in some minutes, and the influences in the deformation of the modern appearance features. This is very interesting because. It, uh, affects the 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 deformation or the geometry of the deformation in the area and may have implications also in the in the petroleum systems interpretation. We have also put together a paleo paleogeography for the area. This needs to be okay for of course ordered 
reconstructed in time with paleo paleospastic uh, reconstruction. But this is to give you an to give you an idea of the uh, stratigraphic features we are seeing in the area. This is an open Miocene interpretation performed in this project. We identified the the coastline at uh, the in the open Miocene. Already the presence of some uh, major rivers in the area like Magdalena, Cauca, and Sinu and Atrato rivers. And uh, these are very important because this, these are the rivers that my uh, uh, have my, my constitute the conduits for sediments in the deeper portions of the basin. Now we are, I will give you a summary of what we have gathered or we have collected together interpreted uh, in the last uh, year regarding petroleum systems and modeling. As I mentioned, we managed to put together almost 1,300 uh, sam sample uh, piston core locations in piston core uh, analysis and results. These are the interpretations the, the interpretation we have. And out of the evidence from of the piston coring regarding the geochemistry, total scanning fluorescences, uh, uh, biomarkers, and in some locations, Diamond Deutsch, we identified some very interesting areas where the evidences of fluids in the piston cores indicated a high maturity level. Here indicated in red, even over mature, uh, sorry, in green, even over mature in red, and a low maturity level in the rest of the samples. But this indicates that the petroleum systems, at least that what is reflected in the piston core, is indicated as mature petro, uh, petroleum system. But interestingly, as you see, there is no systematic, uh, uh, geometrically distributed distribution of the piston coring. It has been collected by uh, different companies in different leases in the basin. And maybe we will need to cover some other areas in order to have a, a, a more systematic uh, uh, coverage of the, of the basin. These are the, the uh, a detail of the, of the piston cores. With, rec uh, with records of thermogenic processes out of the diamond doit analysis. Uh, these, are, these are the results thermo uh, thermogenic in the deeper part of it, what we call Columbia Basin, uh, thermogenic processes indicated by piston core in, in the Guajira area, and thermogenic processes indicated by piston core in the Sinu offshore area. As you see, the, thermogen the mature thermogenic processes are all over the basin, uh, of course, as, as constrained by the distribution of the piston cores, but it's a good, it's a, it's a really strong indication that uh, the petroleum systems are working properly. We also find or ascribe the hydrocarbon evidences to the fluid, uh, to, to the fluid dynamics in the system. In this, in this project, we pay special attention to the relations of the relate to the relation of the piston cores with so surface features. Many of the piston cores, of, of, of course, are located where we see a very interesting feature. Many are many of them, or some of them, are not so evident uh, uh, with their, uh, in their relationship with the subsurface. Some of them are, of course, related to the very striking uh, structures. And uh, again, regionally, this indicates that the uh, uh, deformation in the subsurface when it is related to the, uh, when it is with coincides when a piston core locations usually indicates the presence of thermogenic processes are as indicated by the geochemistry anal the chemical analysis. With this information, with the structural uh, mapping and interpretation of the whole basin, we put together for the first time a, a full regional petroleum system model. Here is a petroleum system uh, uh, modeling performed in 2D and 3D. This was done by the, by the team led by Cesar Mora uh, in the Caribbean, which is uh, Cesar Mora is one of the experts in petroleum systems in Colombia. Uh, and the results are indicated like this. In the, in the greenish colors, we see the all gener the generation window, the maturity, the proper maturity level for generation of hydrocarbons. And as, as you might re remember, in the first slides in the of the basement and the and the and the uh, Caribbean cross, this this outline uh, coincides really strikingly with the area where the basement is deeper and with the is claimed that the Caribbean cross is thinner. We still need to see what is the correlation 
if this is a con this maturity level is a is a, is a is an effect of the particularly different uh, re uh, thermal regime. But again, this is what a model indicates that we have extensive area with proper maturity level. Of course, we did we perform a, a transformation ratio analysis, and that indicates again and calibrated with the with the evidence we have in wells and piston cores that the petroleum systems are working. Uh, this is one of the models we did for uh, chart pathways. This is uh, ascribed to the Oligocene, Lower Miocene uh, uh, structural maps. And we see here that uh, the maps uh, predict a, 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 big, a, a, big, a big group of hydrocarbon accumulations. And very interestingly, in contrast with what of what the, the, the production and the recent discoveries indicates, the model indicates more oil than gas occurrences uh, that should be present in the area. Maybe we, we, we haven't explored extensively, especially the deeper portion of the basin. Here we have in this area, we have, did you see my, my, my uh, pointer here? We have gas extends, big, big gas fields here in the Guajira area. We have discoveries here in this area recent discoveries uh, like Uchuba, Orca here. Uh, we have the discoveries of Kronos and Gorgon here for the south. And these discoveries are 97, 99% dry gas. So we need to further calibrate the model or we need, or we need to, to see what's going on because the model is properly constructed. It's a model, of course, but it, uh, the prediction is more oil than gas. We, this is something we need to pay attention further down the road. Now, with this uh, overview of the geological features, I will, I will give you a, a summary of the plate concept that we have all, uh, identified in the basin. Of course, this is uh, it has great areas between different types of plates, but this is a good, this is an approach to keep, a, a, to keep pursuing, uh, fostering the, the exploration in the basin. One main, uh, play type in the basin is sandstones on basement heights in the basin. This has been a, a this is reflected at development of basal sandstones against the uh, paleogeography. This has been uh, already proven in areas like Chuchupa field. In this feature here, this is our, these are the Chuchupa field wells. It's a, it's a field that is in the level of if along Chuchupa and Ballena is a, pro, is, a, is a single field in the level of 7 trillion cubic feet of gas in uh, original gas in place. This, 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 the same features or a very similar feature was discovered here in the further north in Orca discovery in 2014. It's a, a little bit older, so we are, we are putting together this play as uh, involving oligo, upper oligocene to lower miocene uh, clastic uh, deposits. A, a very similar feature in terms of paleogeography are carbonates on basement high. Of course, these are related to, to shallow bathymetries, especially in the upper Miocene, upper Ligocene, and lower Miocene. Here again, we have the area of Ballena, of Ballena field. We have a, a very interesting uh, Perla field here, which is uh, uh, located, located in the re same regional framework. Perla is in the level of 17 TCF. Every time you ask, they, they, they tell you a, a bigger number, but it's a huge discovery. Here we have interesting features regional, regionally developed, developed here in this part of the basin and further south. And as you may know, if we go further northwest, this is not direct, directly involved in our project, but uh, the Paraiso well drilled by Noble in Nicaragua drill uh, in the level of 500 meters of carbonate. There was a dry hole, but it proves the, uh, that around the Caribbean, the, the carbonate developments uh, need to be uh, looked after. Uh, here is, uh, are some details of the Ballena field. The, here is the, uh, the top of the Ballena, of the Ballena limestone. We might see here a feature like a gas chimney, even the dim out of this seismic event here in the top of the of the of the structure, maybe related to the presence of gas. And here in the other direction, you see the same feature, 
the dimming out of the seismic uh, 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 reflection. Another very interesting feature that has been is been uh, has been proven in the in the area recently is the fall bell associated to fall bell structures in the in the boundary between the Cari South Caribbean uh, the fall belt and the Caribbean plate. This is the the formational front, which is here in the Guajira area, of, are, are in the out, outer portion of the Guajira area and in the Sino area. Here in the middle is being uh, obscured or obliterated by the Magdalena fan. Maybe the Magdalena, uh, we have seen in recent information that maybe the Magdalena fan buried the, the expression of the South Caribbean, the four belt, the four belt. And this is a expression in seismic. This is the chrono discovery in 2015. It's in the same province. The geometry is very similar to the to the Gorgon discovery announced uh, some months ago. And here's a, it's a seismic line without the interpretation. And you see that, that the structures are really evident. And of course, this needs to be, this need to be uh, or had the chance to be uh, looked after all along the the South Caribbean the four belt. Uh, in, uh, also locally, you have identified that associated with the fault belt, there are some uh, strike slip features that seems to be more symmetrical, like the Kalasu project drill already here, the Kalasu prospect, the Kalasu well, sorry, already drilled here. The, the structure is more symmetrical than the fault belt that is uh, neatly uh, uh, dipping in one direction with, with, the, with the vergence to the, to the Northwest. Uh, but there are some structures in the front of the South Caribbean, the four that are more symmetrical. We think that might be related more to strike and slip features like the Kalasu uh, well was drilled in 2017 uh, and uh, has really, really good reservoirs, reservoir records, but it seems to lack of seal in the structure. Uh, there are some other features that are more structural that have been identified, have been identified all over the basin in the inner part, in the Guajira Basin, in the southern part of the, of the Sinu area, and in the deeper portion of the, Cari of the Caribbean area, of the Caribbean plate. As you see again, this coincides with the area where the basement is deeper and the, sequ the metal sequence is uh, thicker. Um, here are some uh, features that where this has, this has been tested and need to be uh, 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 look after. These are in the northeast portion of the Guajira area, the Chimari and Santana wells. Santana was considered at the time, 1979, a gas discovery, but at that time, at the, at the same time, gas wasn't a really considered a good uh, thing to, to be found. Uh, but still it's a non-commercial discovery there that attested the validity of this, of this onlapping against basement highs. Uh, more in the side of the stratigraphic features that need to be or have been uh, further uh, documented with 3D seismics, we had the Miocene middle to upper Miocene to Pliocene channel complexes that have been in the outer, outer deeper portion of the Guajira Basin. Of course, more of them, most many of them related to and to the uh, expression of the delta fan. These are the expression of paleodrenages paleo from the uh, neogene. These are examples as uh, we recognize them in the Cartagena area here in this area. Uh, Texaco in the 80s, in the early 80s, drilled several wells called Cartagena. Cartagena too was a discovery. The quality of the seismic is not that good, but we managed to identify in our project in, in, and it has been previously published by Martinez Cetal the development of these of this, uh, uh, channelized features. Here we drilled in 2012, along with the uh, uh, BP and the Nekion in Colombia, the, the well Mapale that, uh, according to our interpretation, it was uh, located in the edge of one of these channels. So it didn't, it didn't uh, um, drill enough thickness to be a, co a commercial uh, discovery. It was a discovery, but was classified as non as non commercial, but the sedimentary features are really present and really uh, especially really evident in the near uh, 
near uh, near Magdalena fan and also we interpreted that will be present in the in the distant Magdalena fan which is here uh, in, an, in a regional expression it has been documented by some authors like uh, Leslie Amman like Carvajal uh, Antorrado uh, and some uh, local uh, researchers like Idarga that claim or identify that all this area has been uh, needed to be filled during the middle Miocene up to the recent by the Magdalena River, which is the main, the main uh, river here in the northern part of Colombia. The Atrato River is, is here, but maybe it's very constrained. The Sinu here is around here, and the Paleocauca River should, came, should come out by the middle Miocene, upper Miocene in this area. But today, the feeder of this area should be the Magdalena uh, River, it going all the way down to the Hes, Hes Escarpment. Of course, being that distal, maybe the channels are no are no so stacked as we have in the near in the near uh, areas, so near to the to the mountain, the river. But still, the extension is so high that it deserves to be considered as, as reservoir potential. Uh, again, here we see this uh, seismic events in the size in the in the in the sections here in the deeper portion of the basin. You see these uh, seismic events that have been considered by some authors that Leslie, Leslie Manning in their work and Idarraga as uh, evidences and the indirect evidence, seismic evidences of uh, um, reservoir units in the middle to upper Miocene and even into the Pliocene. Here we identify also some mass, mass trampos complexes that would provide a good seal for the area. And regarding the broad or the bigger uh, uh, consideration of petroleum systems, we have seen these vertical, absolute vertical features that might, might attest a, a migration, vertical migration pathways from the deeper portion of the area where we identify a possible mesozoic rock, as I mentioned here, possible mesozoic rock that have been documented in deed, 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 deed DSDPs and ODPs here in the deeper portion of the basin, where the record of Cretaceous is being proven, <laughs> attested, uh, is being uh, has been interpreted as condensed sequences, but the, the Cretaceous are is the Cretaceous sedimentary Cretaceous is recorded uh, in that part of the area, in the part of the basin, and uh, in areas where we don't have wells, but we had thicker uh, rec sedimentary records. Uh, as we interpreted, we might have thicker uh, uh, records of these Cretaceous units with, with quality as sur rocks. Uh, here we see uh, another overview of this. Here is tied with ODPs and, and SDPs, the SDPs. This was a work uh, presented, uh, prepared for NH last year. Very interestingly, we checked this independently and we see these deeper portions kind of kind of hemi gravens. Uh, we think only in the geometry in the deeper portion where we have a, a sub basins in the level of 10, 20, 30 kilometers wide and, and, and long with uh, several feet, a thousand feet of, of, of sedimentary record expected to be of a quality as, as a um, source rock. Another interesting feature that we have identified uh, in the sense of place for the area are uh, geometries associated with mud diapirs. The mud diapirs are present all over the basin. These are, uh, this is our, the old, these are the old lines where we see the, the uh, diapir, diapirism present. Uh, but interestingly, we have, we, have, we have look, we have check, and we don't see salt we don't see halokinesis here in the basin, but we see features geometrically similar, more associated to mod diaperism. Here, of course, this is associated uh, uh, to pressure to pressure uh, anomalies, and most more many of them are related to bottom simulated reflect, uh, reflectors that indicate the presence of free gas, free hydrates in the in the area. Here, the BSR is a uh, evidence of this. Here, see, you see the cross cutting relationship between the BSR, which is the presence of free gas, free hydrate, the hydrates. We see the developments almost to the to the bottom of to the sea bottom of this 
chimneys of diapirs that may indica that indicate the, uh, uh, free, the fluid flow of, 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 this, of this free gas. And we see this, some of these features that go all the way down to the sea bottom, producing these uh, interesting mud volcanoes, some of them already uh, sampled by piston coring. Uh, we see another some other interesting features uh, as place concepts in the area like progradational sequences mainly from the middle from the upper Miocene to the Pliocene uh, identified in the Guajira and Ureba areas. Here is a feature that we see these progradational units. Uh, this has been mainly documented in the area with two seismics. We are in the in the phase of identifying this with further detail in three seismics, but at least. From this, uh, uh, you, you, you can recognize that in C2 seismics is very striking. It has been already studied a couple of times by Mense and Mann and dec documented and published. Uh, some areas more, a little bit more restricted and related to the tectonic features in the northern part of Colombia, like the Santa Marta Bucaramanga fault system here, strike slip, left lateral strike slip fault, and Noca right lateral strike slip fault have very interested uh, trapping uh, features associated to flower structure. Here, we also have the expression of the Quisa fault, also a, a, a range fault, a lateral a, 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 a strike slip fault that produces features in the kind of a pull up, uh, locally pull upper basins that might be, might be, uh, uh, might produce interesting, interesting geomechical, ge geometries that can be, uh, either consider as place to look after or as area of conduits for the hydrocarbon irrigations to area to, towards accumulations like the camp that the Chuchupapil here. This is an expression of the Quisa fault here in this part of the of the basin in the middle part of the Guajira area. And some models indicate that the, uh, already indicate that uh, this can be uh, ascribed as, as to a model of a basin center uh, pots. We have identified in total in the level of 13 to 16 plays. I, will, I won't show you all of them. We have documented all of them in this document here that ANH may, uh, had made available for the industry. You can go and check this presentation, uh, this, this uh, PowerPoint presentation and some others in the ANH webpage. And we had identified, or at least as reported uh, in the literature, the fracture vermi potential, basement potential as reservoir, mass transport complexes that may be either reservoir or a very good seal for the underlying sequences, least uh, faulting uh, closures related to this, uh, and in the, case, in the case of the Guajira to the mm, uh, middle to upper Miocene detachment, differential compacted closures that might be also considered in the category of uh, depending on the structural interpretation that you have for the basement height, it might be ascribed to us another place. And uh, in this extension and settle, some, are rela some related to pull apart basins, we have this uh, compactional feature that I might, might have this uh, positive uh, uh, and that's this closure as anticlines may be caught by uh, some that appear features. All, again, these are already documented and published. Uh, this is a play summary though, of what I have shown show, show, show you all over the basin. This is a representative seismic section. You see the plays are all over the area. Uh, some of them I have been already proven like, like the basement high, like the carbonate and sandstone on basement highs, like the four belt uh, features uh, in the South Caribbean, the four belt. Some of them uh, need to be fully uh, pursued or, or looked after, but this is a, a, this gives us a systematic way to look to this extensive base. Uh, and out of this information, we constructed a, a, a guide for keeping the exploration in the area under the, the, the methodology of Playfair maps. As you know, of course, you, you are, some of you, of you know more those of this than myself. We built, we put together the structural maps, the resource of the petroleum system model, the paleogeographic interpretation we perform, they identify place in a geometrical distribution or geographic distribution 
And we put this together as a, a traffic light maps that indicate the, that lead, lead us to, to see areas where the place under the, 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 the leads, the lead distribution, along with the structural mapping and the petroleum system, had the good chance to be uh, to be a, a positive uh, um, to provide positive accumulation in green, in yellow, mid chances or mid level chances of having hydrocarbon accumulation, and in red, a lower uh, possibility or less knowledge of this feature. And here. Uh, the, the examples with, with the, the, the play, fairway, play fairway maps we built for this area. These are the plays that we ascribe as related to the Cretaceous uh, as source rock. Of course, you see the distribution in the deeper portion of the basin where the Cretaceous is uh, interpreted as to be mature and where the, the, the basement is deeper and we might have more uh, sediments preserved. In the near shore area in the Guajira, we have local records or Cretaceous source rocks around here and around here that might have the chances of high possibilities of development of this or, or, or aside to this to this uh, play map. Uh, and this Cretaceous was was further down qualified, further up qualified or or uh, characterized with the presence of piston coring with thermogenic evidences, and we did for their analysis and again sorry this is in spanish we ascribe the, the the high chances in this type a areas mid chances in the type c type b areas and uh, lower chances in the type c areas this is not to mean that not to necessarily con uh, uh, ascribe that these areas are of low chances but maybe we need more information we did the same exercise for Oligocene and Lower Miocene. Again, we developed this uh, uh, geographic information systems approach of putting together the information with the piston coding. And we had, again, areas with high chances of, of occurrences of this, or high chances for this particular play, middle chances and lower chances. And in the late Miocene and Lower Pliocene, the, the, certainly, or Surely, for sure, more related to stratigraphic features, we have this type uh, of map that provides to NHG and to the investors a regional idea or where to focus, either to have a list or to acquire more information. Very important, very interesting to see all this green area without piston coring. We really need to see what is going on there because it's extensive, extensive region of the basin that need more information. I will I will I will throw, I will throw here uh, some some uh, update of what's, what is have been happening this year because we have very interesting things going on at this time. And this is what we had a couple of years ago. It was the exploration level in the area. We have four discoveries: Orca, Chronos, Porphyrangel, and Chronos, all in in evaluation. Some non-commercial discoveries, as I mentioned, Mapale, Calasu. These are the wells in the last decade. And I'm not mentioning all the wells. It's more like, like the wells that we have, have performed, especially taking advantage of 3D seismics. Most of the wells that we, per, we drilled in Colombia before didn't use or didn't take advantage or they didn't have available 3D seismics. And as you see, the discoveries are distributed in different parts of, parts of the basin, or guys in the northern boss area of the Guajira, and Kronos is in the south southwestern uh, portion of the basin. So we are in Mapale is in the middle. So we are kind of kind of uh, looking at the uh, effect, effect, uh, at the effectivity of the petroleum systems in the diff in different parts of the basin. What was happening by mid year, and I I kept this as a, I didn't update it on purpose because by by the middle by Five, six months ago, we were wondering what was going on with Gorgon, with the Gorgon 2, which is the appraisal of Gorgon and Kronos structure, and what was going on with Chuchupa that Petrobras and Ecopetrol were drilling, were, were drilling in this area, in the Guajira area. And we were wondering if, by the planning and all activities in the year, uh, Chevron and Shell 
cut the chance to drill cumbia. They, they certainly they didn't. Uh, we expect that this well is, uh, is to be drilled next year. And these are some of the results uh, in the frame of our play, uh, play uh, proposal. This is Uchuba discovery. It's in the lower, uh, in the area we call Tirona Depression, north in the northern uh, offshore north of the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta. This is the uh, regional basement high. We have evidence of piston cores in the area, so we 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 considered before drilling of Uchuba that this area were a, was a good candidate to attest the thermogenic processes. And this is a very close to the location in Uchuba. This was an information of a colleague, David Sanabria, published uh, like two years ago before Uchuba. This is a master thesis where uh, his model indicates that there are good presence of, of good uh, uh, forecasting of source rocks around here. And here was was uh, the location. Here's the location where Uchuba was drilled. We don't have a official public information at the time, but uh, two, two days ago I was in a meeting uh, where the president of the Copetrol was present, and he claimed that uh, Uchuba is in the level of several TCF uh, of gas, which is really really good news for for the exploration in the area for Colombia because it's is the is one of the closest to the uh, to the facilities here in in uh, Guajira area. So he had this he had the chance to be developed uh, to expedite the the production uh, phase. And this is again is the same image I showed you before. This is the Kronos Gorgon thread. This is a, a, a these are the structures related to the to the to the lower block of the South Caribbean default belt. Uh, these are very young sediments from upper Miocene to lower Pliocene. And uh, it's also claimed that this area is uh, several TCF of gas in the uh, original gas in place. When these are put together, according to Felipe Bayon, the Copetrol's president, uh, that this week, these two provinces, Kronos Gorgon and Uchuba, are already in the level of more than three or four times the original gas in place already discovered in the Caribbean. So we should be talking, and, and please don't buy chairs with these words, we should, we should, we should be talking about 20 uh, TCFs of gas, uh, original gas in place in the area. Uh, of course, this is something very interesting for us, really good news, because the ideas we are putting together still keep us in the track of the positive trend of the evidences for petroleum systems in the basin. I will throw out, throw, I will throw some conclusions, some final remarks, and I will be open to to share uh, uh, some reflections. If you have some questions, as I mentioned already, the Caribbean offshore is extensive uh, basin. We evaluate an area of 20, uh, 250,000 square kilometers, but it's higher than that. It's bigger than that. We are constrained by some uh, uh, boundary uh, frontiers area with the neighbors, but of course, from the Jerica point of view, we know the basin is more extensive. Has been uh, considered a frontier area, now it's an emerging exploratory region. We have indications, uh, several internal reports that uh, indicate that the area we have a level of, or, or, of hydrocarbon potential of 35 to 87 trillion feet of gas. Uh, and as I mentioned from the modeling, we the mole keeps indicating, and of course, as you see, you are familiar with this, you know that we don't run only one model, we run several models, and all of the models indicate that we, we might have chances of for finding more ga uh, liquids than gas. So that's something that you keep evaluating, especially in the deeper portion of the area where the lack of direct information. The drilling operations that were uh, successful performed in, in this year. Uchuba and Gorgon too, are reported as multi-TCF discoveries. Of course, this is good news for the investor here, for uh, Ecopetrol, for the government, because uh, uh, we have the chance to keep uh, in the investment interested in our area. And even if it's only gas, these are even more important because everybody, all of you here, uh, 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 I suppose that we are in agreement that the gas, natural gas is the transition uh, uh, transition fuel, fuel 
for the uh, energy switch that we are going to, that there we are uh, uh, starting, not only in Colombia, but in the world. So the gas we need for our transition is already there. Uh, the petroleum systems, according to the, all the studies that we have put together here and previous studies where we, that we have uh, been involved with, consider that the petroleum systems are effective. Some of them are hypothetical. We still need to see the and in detail the quality in the different portion of the basin. Maybe we need to acquire more piston coatings in some areas. Maybe it's something that this is maybe a long shot, but maybe we need to 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 be able to drill an stratigraphic well in the different portion of the area because as you know, all of you know, all the wells are located in the in in, in the relatively relatively higher positions, and in this case where we drill, drill a condensed section of the Cretaceous, so we don't see the full thickness of the Cretaceous. And uh, most of the places that we identify here are ascribed to structural features. For stratigraphic features, we need, it, we need further studies in the in 3D seismics. And again, this is more advertising and, 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 a, and a kick in the, in, 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 in the kicking for, for our government. We already have the gas we need in our country. We have, on top of the gas we have in the in, in the onland area, in the onshore area, which is in the level of 26, 26 TCF of original gas in place in, uh, in inland. We have this level of 35 to 87 TCFs in offshore. So we have the gas we need for a responsible energy transition. This is what I have to share. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for, very much for your attention. Uh, and of course, uh, I'll be open to questions, to questions or comments. Back to you, Susan. Thank you, Victor. That was amazing. That was so in-depth and, and so valuable. And I, I really appreciate the fact that it's, it's absolutely current too. So I'm sure that we have um, questions. I didn't see any in the, oh, here's some in the chat. Let me check the chat. Um, okay, here are two questions. Let's see. Um, have your maturity and migration models calibrated well with, with the wells? That's the first one. Well, uh, I can say that we have calibrated our models with the wells, uh, but we don't have many wells for that. So uh, where the well is located, the model works perfectly. The, the 2D models and 1D models works perfectly there. And of course, we recognize that we have uncertainties in extensive areas, especially the, the northwest portion is extensive and the central portion is really extensive. But we, of course, we have calibrated our models. Okay. And then the second part of the question was, would it be possible for you to mention the API gravity range of the oil wells and discoveries? Well, as I mentioned, we have sold in the wells, we have recognized, we have very few indications of liquid hydrocarbons. We know that there are indications of few barrels of production in Ballena and Chuchupa area. It's in the level of 50, uh, more, 40, more than 45, 50 API, but these are really, really small, small uh, 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 volumes. And the recent discoveries like Orca, uh, Kronos, Gorgon 1, Purple Angel, and Gorgon 2 are and 97-99% methane, so uh, it's dry gas. Okay, great. So we have a, um, have a question from Kiel Blondell. Uh, good day, I'm from Trinidad, which shares the same Caribbean plate. What is Colombia's stranded gas profile as Venezuela has the Dragon gas field east of Colombia near the Paria Peninsula? And Trinidad has the hibiscus gas field next to Dragon. Uh, if I understood properly, well, we, we have the challenge. Uh, you mentioned stranded gas. I guess we, we have the challenge, uh, and it's an it's an interesting challenge. We we had discussed this with the commercial people because they, they claim what happened if you if you find if you claim to have found so much gas, and it's it's a nice problem to have. Uh, we have a, internally a local demand for gas. We will, in a couple of years, we will be, we will be needing to have more gas, and we are already importing some gas. So we have the internal market for gas, 
And I been talking, I haven't been talking recently, but a few years ago, I talked with, the, I, I've been dealing with commercial people in Ecopetrol. They will try to identify gas markets in Central, Central, Central America. In Central America, um, many of these countries produce energy out of diesel, which is not mm -hmm. good for the environment. And we have the gas that might, met, might meet this market. Oh, yes, that would be a lot cleaner. Um, so I just want to mention to everyone that I am recording this and we are recording it and we will send a link to the recording to all of those who have registered. And also, um, I will be uploading it. So um, let, let, me, to... let me mention uh, uh, something about that. The, the, the National Hydrocarbon Agency is, keeps quite interested in, in, in fostering and promoting the exploration in the area. So this presentation is considered publish, uh, public. So I am, I am allowed to share it with you if you want to. For, for you, want, you want me to put a, to throw a PDF uh, for you to share. Oh, that's great. That's great. And we will be sharing the, the recording. I'll be uploading it um, so that it will be available on, on YouTube as well then. We'll make, so we'll really do a lot of promotion for a and <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Anyway, so Clinton Tippett has a question. Um, how texturally and mineralogically mature are these sediments? And is it diagenetic degradation of reservoir properties a serious problem? Okay, for for the for the areas I, I know of Chuchupa and Ballena, there are there is a good preservation of of of, of petrophysical quality. So there is, there is no big diagenic diagenetic uh, uh, effect on the area, and for the discoveries like uh, like. Uh, um, I, I know better than one of the, the ones in the south, Cronus, Gorgon, and Purple Agit. These are really, really young sediments. They are, the, the lithification is really low. So there is no diagenetic, diagenetic processes evident. And I will throw some advertising here. I am doing, I am leading another, another project with the Minister of Sciences in Colombia, where we are evaluating beach sediments all around the coast, the Caribbean coast and Colombian coast. And we are modeling diagenetic processes, and in order to see what's going on, what, what will happen with reservoir rocks, but there are no big, uh, strong effects on on the genesis from what I what I know. Okay, thank you. So this is from Uyen Bui. Many many thanks, Victor, for coverage in depth for tectonics and play concepts for the area. It reminds me of the geology of the South China Sea in Southeast Asia. You mentioned fractured re basement reservoir, has any discovery been found in the basement? Well, there is a, an old report here in Colombia, uh, and, it's a, and there is a report by, if I recall, Nelson in 1957 in Mara La Paz in Western Venezuela, where they claim that the basement is, uh, is fr fractured enough to be a reservoir, and it's in a, in a, in a structural position that is overlying the source rock. Uh, there is a small field in the area uh, near, near to Chuchupa, which is called Rio Acha. Some reports claim that uh, it might have a basement as, uh, with reservoir quality. And we have, been, we have verified, the, we have studied the information and we don't have production reports from that. It was a concept that some, someone published and tried to, to promote but we haven't we haven't been able to 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 mature it uh, to, to mature this this concept of no 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 like in no in the bay, in the big uh, level like Kulon basins in 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 Vietnam in Korea and these areas. Oh, excellent! Thank you. So Carlos Lobo um, has a question: What seismic attributes were used for gas exploration? Do you consider the use of acoustic impedance? important for gas exploration? Well, I am not an expert interpretation, but as only the people in, in the team that I, I mentioned at the beginning, they did a full suite of, uh, they call it combos in, in, in the software, in the interpretation, the interpretation software. 
We use acoustic impedance. We can, we use instantaneous frequencies. Uh, we, where we where the seismic allows for it, we use a, a spectral decomposition, but still some uh, most of the information in the area is uncalibrated. We don't have we don't have swells in all of the three seismic, for example. In order to do this analysis, of course, we prefer three seismics. And no, in no, in, in no, no, in all of the three seismics volumes are are wells to to calibrate. There is also there is an interesting project of, of the Servicio Geológico for INH where we are where they are um, a, a testing a, a attributes and ABO ABA analysis uh, when in a, in, a, in an area where the Bolusco well was drilled, but there is no the common this is not the common case. So uh, we tested what we have we tried what we have in the in the seismic software seismic interpretation software. Uh, but sometimes the there is the, the quality of the seismic is not good enough, or or we don't have wells to calibrate. It's a challenge. Excellent. Okay, Roberto Carlos it says, "Great talk, thanks. Many of the discoveries have gas isotopic signatures towards biogenic the biogenic window. How do you reconcile these data with piston core?" information. Very good, very good, very good question from, from, from Roberto Carlos. Uh, we see trends. I have to I have to say we have a, uh, we have some publications regarding that that we haven't pinpoint the fully thermogenic uh, uh, hydrocarbon in the wells. Uh, if we, if we go deep, if we, we see, if we go in the column where we did the, the well, the gas chromatography in the well, in instant, for instance, in Kronos, uh, we see a trend of having a, a heavier isotopes if, if we go down, but we didn't get to the enough depth to be fully, thermo, to, to consider fully thermogenic. If we go in the Guajira from Chuchupa, Ballena, towards Orca, we see a trend of heavy or 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 a bigger imprint of thermogenic isotope of isotope, heavier isotope, isotopes that give us a trend of thermogenic. So what our interpretation and this is a, a, from the methodology we 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 work with the IFP uh, like uh, in, at the beginning of this century. We consider that what we see here, for instance, I will give you an example of Chuchupa and Ballena. We see the final. The final, uh, the final edge of the of the migration path, and in the uh, according to this model, which is a, a we call uh, is ascribed to to isotopic and molecular fractionation, uh, what we what migrates what is it's easier to migrate for lighter molecules and lighter isotopes. So what, what we see at the end of the migration path are mainly methane, which looks Really, it really looks very biogenic. If we go uh, uh, at the beginning of the migration path in the deeper part of the basin, like in the big depot center here we have in the middle of the Caribbean, uh, this model indicates that we might have a fully thermogenic and heavier molecules, heavier hydrocarbons. So it's as associated to a model. So we we we, we match these evidences uh, with this with this model. Of course, it's a model. And the piston course, in the piston course, we we already we have some locations where we have a, a we, have, we have been able to to retrieve a, a dia, to make a diamond doids and biomarker analysis, which is a, for sure thermogenic. Oh, thank you. Well, I just noticed the time, and we're pretty much out of our our time um, contract with everyone, but we do have time for just one more short question. So this is from Atila. Zabo and says, um, does Gorgon have seismic direct hydrocarbon indication support? And if so, what kind of DHI? Well, uh, yes, I forgot to mention that there is a, it's very interesting. Uh, uh, and after, after we drill Kronos, uh, there is a colleague of mine, Antonio Velasquez, uh, he's an expert in geophysics. Now he's a, a manager in Ecopetrol Brazil. He has 
couple of at least remember a couple of publications of uh, uh, attributes and seismic uh, seismic inversion applications in the offshore Caribbean. And one of the uh, one of his examples, in fact, I should take this, I should take one of these of these figures. Uh, shows after we drill after the drill chronos, we recalibrate the seismic, and there is a very striking flat uh, DHI, really flat. Uh, uh, down deep of chrono discovery, and we calibrated this with Gorgon, and in Gorgon it had this direct hydrocarbon indicator, the HI from the size they use, really a book example. Uh, I will I will look after it, yeah, yeah, because I know this is already published. Oh, that's really that's really great. Well, Victor, I want to thank you for a wonderful presentation and also for such incredible answers to this. Um, um, questions that were pretty much you know off the cuff so you that was great and yeah. want to thank all the attendees I want to remind you that you will be getting an email with a link to the recording and if you have any questions for Victor um please get in touch but with him you can drop me an email I think I put my email somewhere here yes this is my email you can drop me an email and again uh, you are interested in this uh, this PDF is, uh, I have a permission to share it. So uh, it's in, a, in our, in the best interest of our, of our country and the NH and Servicio Geológico to, to have you, to keep you interested. Thank you very much for your time. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Susan. Just thank you, APG, for having me on board. And please keep inviting me. Thank you very much. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And para todos que hablan español, muchas gracias. Ha sido un placer y un honor estar uh, en, en, en asistiendo a esta presentación tan excelente. So thank you everyone. Okay, gracias a todos, thank you very much. Thank you, Susan. <laughs>